And the final uh, coalescer pack system I want to talk about is a, a secondary mesh pack. Uh, there are a lot of different varieties of the secondary mesh pack from a, a, a stainless steel mesh that's built up to uh, say polypropylene knitted mesh with monofilament fibers. Um, d d many different kinds. This is the one I see a lot in industry where uh, a manufacturer, and I see this a lot in the cylindrical below ground market where um, low cost market where they put a primary coalescer in. The primary coalescer is doing not a whole lot of work so they're counting on the secondary coalescer to do the work. Uh, here's a Here's a, a small coalescer I brought along to show you. This is a small coalescer. This would be the entry area of the coalescer here, so your wastewater would go through. And the idea is very similar to the VTC, the vertical tube coalescer, where instead of by Stokes law removal of oil, this one again is by um, attraction of oil to these polypropylene fibers. Now, um, you'll note that this is very dense very uh, dense water can go through it but as soon as uh, oils come in here the theory is that they'll coalesce against this mesh and the the oil will slowly work its way up and out of the pack but you can see that if this is the case and there are any solids involved the solids drift by connect collect and uh, become uh, part of the oil and, and end up creating sludge and this is a very difficult pack to clean a traditional pack out in industry is probably 8 inches, 12 inches, up to about 14 inches thick that I've seen. So to clean that deep into a pack like this doesn't work. In fact, the solids get hung up in here so badly that these packs tend to sag with the weight of the solids and uh, it's just a removal cost. Uh, a lot of these packs, especially the plastic packs, we find that in the industry, after a year, two or three, for the most part, these packs have to be replaced with an ongoing cost that's associated with it.